Hey, how are you guys? Great. Great? Good? You good? Good? Great. It's funny, is it not? That's the way we greet each other. As we smile behind our concealed masks, not the ones we've been wearing these last two years. And we ask one another those three worthy questions. But not as a sign that we truly care. Why even bother? Should I say, it's going bad. My grandpa just died. I got four hours of sleep last night because I actually tried in my homework. And you know, that thing that we call life? Where friends fall apart and parents, they fight. Because that's one reality we're willing to deny. So I deny it when I say I'm doing fine. Because saying I'm not means getting into an actual, real conversation. You know, the usual pal. I love your clothes. Your shoes are fire. Is that your baby? She's so adorable. Fake. I'm fake. You're fake. We're all fake. It's a type of fakeness where I'm left wondering what is even real about how I act or if I'm cool or in. Do people even like me for who I am? So then I twist it around to am I skinny enough? Am I smart enough? Am I funny enough? Am I enough? Am I enough to be spending all my time on this meaningless conversation? To spend so much that I don't have much more to give. It's because I, like most teens, tech, like most people, seek for the approval of others. So throughout this whole speech, we're going to be tackling the problems of why do we seek approval from others? Why are we so fake? And hopefully how to overcome this fakeness. The need for approval is seen to stem from way, way back. I'm talking about in the, how in the past, Humans worked on physical survival for food, water, and shelter. This meant interacting with other humans. But as our priorities shifted to our now everyday lives, our minds are still hardwired in the past to seek acceptance, deny rejection, all the rewards to please people. In a study done in 2010, kids aged 10 to 13 were given a rigged computer contest that gave them either positive and negative feedback from their peers. The results indicated how kids validated their whole self-esteem on the approval of their peers. In the textbook, A Psychology of Guilt, from a young age, kids seek validation from their parents. This validation moves on to their future relationships, whether it's at home, school, or work. So the cycle goes where we seek acknowledgement, whether it's from our peers, teachers, parental figures. Then we long for a sense of acceptance, for their approval. So then we long for the respect, the esteem, the status, the power, the control, for our identity, for our belonging. But a lot of the times, we can seek all that we want, but never truly find. But what if we're seeking for the wrong things? I mean, right now I say, I'm doing fine. Just less than five minutes ago, you were telling me that you guys are all doing good or great. And it goes back to the whole question of why are we, as individuals, so fake? The terms fake it till you make it applies to all of, all of what I just said. Every time that we enter a new group, we conform to that group. Every time a new person enters our group, we create a new persona or facade. And I realized while I've been doing this thing, in my 17 very long years of living, I mold and I mold myself. I say, let's get rid of this acne with this blurring out filter. Let's mold my hands over my phone and double tap that photo to the person I don't even like enough to swipe through their whole post. Let's mold a smile so I don't have to worry about making other people worry. So I mold and I mold and I smooth out all of those tiny little imperfections to seek perfection. So every 
time we enter a new group. We conform to that group, right? Well, a study found that nearly 75% of people conform to this mob mentality. It normalizes inauthentic behavior and loss of individuality, all in terms of fitting in. And this all happens when we try to see genuine human connection. But then we're seeking for the wrong things. Then after we can't find this genuine human connection, we settle for inauthentic social interaction, which the majority of us give and receive through false kindness. According to Dr. Greenberg and Dr. Julia Fru, false kindness can stem from three things. One, narcissism. A person uses kindness to achieve a goal. Two, control. A person uses kindness to control others. And three, insecurity. Insecure people display nice words for a favor later on. So this type of praise makes us as a receiver feel good. I mean, sure, sometimes we can see this whole false kindness, but it feels flattering, even though it's insincere. UCLA psychology professor Matthew Lieberman found how social media fulfills that desire that we long for when we long to be a part of a group. Social media fulfills that desire when we feel isolated and vulnerable. With every post, like, comment, share, our validation rises up, as well as our need for praise. This, along with in-person validation, makes us susceptible to low self-esteem, depression, and anxiety. So, all this pretending and conforming just to fit in? Well, for most people, fitting in can feel really tiring. And every time we create this false persona, it adds and builds and adds and builds and adds and builds until it becomes suffocating. And then, we become more exhausted and vulnerable and confused about what is even real. Anthropologist Robin Dunbar explains how each person has a limited amount of brain capacity over how many meaningful relationships they can make in their entire lifetime. At most, a person has 150 relationships, 50 friendships, 15 friends, and only five intimate bonds. So out of these hundreds of people in our lives, how do we find these people to be real to? It's simple. We stop being fake. I know, I know, easier said than done. But to untangle that need for approval that has been hardwired in our brains since infancy may seem nearly impossible. But it isn't. Self-acceptance is a real thing. What? Actually loving myself? <laughs> no, 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 I don't like that. Let's just push into this tiny ball, throw it to the ground, and stomp it into non-existence. But to be real, it goes back to the whole idea that not every person is going to like you. The attributes that make you likable to one person makes you completely hateable to the next. Your likability is literally out of your control. So why control it by being fake? Disapproval is normal. People change, they grow, and they leave. There'll be people who talk bad about you and you about them, and that's just the journey of life. But your mindset throughout this can change. Start small first. Focus on yourself. Maybe that's reading the book that you've always wanted to, or watching that movie that always made you laugh. Then unwind even more. Work on bigger things for yourself. And that doesn't mean to do things with the whole idea of, oh, I'm going to be selfish, but do things with the mindset of, am I doing this because it makes me happy? Then unwind even more. Take that social media break. Maybe to omit our whole self-worth from these likes, omit social media for a while. And I know it's hard. We've got to stop seeking validation from other people. Align ourselves not with other people's goals and values, but with our own. And that's just a journey for life. Because I'm sure the majority of us wants to seek this genuine human connection and self-happiness, but we can never truly find it. A lot of times, it's this ongoing battle that we're fighting with ourselves over and over again. And I'm not saying that fakeness can be conquered overnight, 
or simply after listening to this one motivational speech. Because from personal experience, it's hard to find these people to be real to. Sometimes in different scenarios and spaces, we're stuck in our places by being fake. But I genuinely hope that the next time someone says, hey, how are you? Maybe instead of being this whole fake you, you can be real too. Thank you.